All right, looks like we're live. Good morning and welcome to This Week with the uh, Communist Party. Hey, Scott, how are you? Doing well, how are you, Joe? Yeah, I'm a little sad and a little angry. Why is that? There was another shooting yesterday. In Santa Clarita. At a high school and a click within the National Rights Association, despite support from 90% of people in this country, they're still holding um, you know, any effort to manage the gun situation hostage. Mm -hmm. That is freaking outrageous. I mean, outrageous, you know, and, you know. Um, you know, you, um, it, it, it brings to mind a, a category that, that Engels introduced in, in Condition of the Working Class in England, talking about social murder, you know, when, when deliberate inaction by, um, by the ruling class, by the powers in place, uh, results in the the death of citizens over and over and over again. That's uh, right. He was talking mostly about um, hunger and disease in the working class, but I think this qualifies as well. This is this is murder by right wing inaction, foot dragging, and and contempt for the people of this country. And social uh, murder results in social death, um, and uh, and that's what we're dealing with. Um, that is exactly what we're dealing with. I think that we're going to be joined this morning um, by Laura. Let me see if I can uh, bring her in quickly. She came on um, a little, a little late, but um, we're happy to have her. We're going to be talking uh, this Good morning, Laura. Morning, Laura. Hi. Um, hey. We're going to be talking this week about um, impeachment uh, and about the coup in Bolivia. And uh, what else? Uh, looking forward to our upcoming national committee meeting, um, the beginning of which will be live streamed on uh, CPUSA's Facebook page. Yes, tomorrow at 1.30. Be there or be square, as we used to say back in Youngstown, <laughs> back in the day. Uh, 1.30 here on Facebook, uh, you'll be hearing the keynote opening to the first meeting of the uh, Communist Party uh, National Committee. Well, you know, the impeachment hearing started this week. Have any, either of you been watching them? I have not, no. Laura? I've been reading. I watched the entire thing. I was just entranced. Mm. Um, you know, Trump said it was boring, and yet, uh, as Amy Good, that Goodman, I think, pointed out during that boring time, he tweeted out 30 times. So he was, anyway, I think it's fascinating. It's a lesson in democracy and it's a lesson about Congress um, finally holding <clears throat> the president accountable. Um, there's so many fascinating aspects to it. You know, number one, for one thing, you've got these base, this basically very conservative, hawkish ambassadors who are really not on Trump's side. So you're seeing the division of the right wing on full display here. And, and yet in the credible, their testimony was so credible and detailed. Mm. So it, it's just, um, I thought it was really fascinating to watch, but I don't know, I guess I'm just a geek like that. <laughs> well, there was an enormous push to uh, compel the Congress to hold the president accountable. This would, yeah, this would not have been possible without the victory of um, progressive Democrats, um, people of color, trade unionists um, in the 2018 elections on the basis of a very broad mobilization. And the unifying thing was that the Trump regime has got to go. Uh, so this is, um, I think in a very real sense, the, the, the fruit of, of that victory. Um, Not just progressive Democrats. I mean, you know, a lot of the Democrats who were elected were elected, you know, in GOP districts mm -hmm. or swing districts, and they were centrist, you know, mm -hmm. and they were very reluctant to come on board, you know, which is another reason why Pelosi was holding back, you know. But as the movement uh, arose and, and, and as the demands uh, sharpened, particularly over the summer, even they, when the uh, whistleblower on the national security issue, when the whistleblower 
complaint came, they felt that, Laura, they had enough space to, you know, um, step up and uh, say, you know, boy, talking to Trump, you done gone too far. You've gone too far and you need to be held accountable. Um, I think, I, I, I may be, you know, completely off base, but that's my estimate of the situation. Um, what did you say you were reading, uh, Scott? Oh, I, I was just, uh, I've been reading uh, the coverage of it um, for some reason. Um, video is, is not my medium. I, I don't, it uh, doesn't work well for me. I listened, I listened to it on the radio and cleaned my kitchen. <laughs> I highly recommend multitasking because you're right, sitting there and watching it, no way. I got to be doing something. Cleaning, right. cleaning house on both ends. Let's get it done. Yeah. Hey, very good. Yeah, that's a good one. Get the old broom out. <laughs> Sweep them jokers out. I doubt they're going to be swept out, though. I think they're going to have to be kicked out. And I yep. doubt that it's going to be happen until uh, the election yeah. next year. But the important thing now, I think, is to create the atmosphere around the impeachment, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that you just can't leave it to Congress. Yep. You know what I mean? You just can't leave it to Congress. People got to be out on the street, mm -hmm. you know, um, on the campuses. At the football games, I yep. saw a, uh, a story about some students at a Southern U University, and each one took uh, one letter of impeach Trump and put it on their jersey. <laughs> that was a wonderful thing, and it made national news. And so it's those kinds of creative uh, things that are, are, are going to help, you know, keep the pressure on. I was out walking my dog this morning, and I saw a guy jogging in a, a, a bright fluorescent green impeach Trump t-shirt. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. In my, in my little conservative town. Yeah, yeah. so cool. hang a sign on a banner in the middle of a highway, send a letter to the editor. You can circulate a meme. By the way, we got two memes on the party uh, Facebook page. One says uh, time for a reckoning and the other one just says impeach, share it. And by the way, before I forget, hold a watch party. All you got to do is click on the button and you can invite your friends to watch this show and you can share it. And uh, that will also help keep the pressure on. Nothing that will make Trump and the ruling class more nervous than the growth of uh, the Communist Party uh, membership and circulation. By and the way, have we ever invited anybody to join the Communist Party on this show? If not, I don't think we have. Oh my God, we're guilty of right up <laughs> in this social democracy. <laughs> Liquidationism, Joe. Liquidationism. Yeah, you can join the party. You know, um, all you got to click do is click on the join button on our Facebook page or go to our website yep. and uh, join. The only requirements are that you be 18 years old and uh, residing in the United States. And if you're not 18, you can still sign up for our newsletter, attend our seminars and webinars and, uh, and everything uh, uh, like that. Well, what else has happened this week? Coup d'etat in Bolivia. Yeah. Sad thing. So, I, you know, I, I remarked, I think it was in the New York Times, uh, there was an article about the coup um, that was sort of, uh, the, the title was something like, um, Morales overreached himself, and that's why you know he was overthrown, chased out. Um, which is was sort of funny to me because it's, it's almost the same headline that the Times ran um, when Salvador Allende uh, was forced from power. And um, in Chile. Uh, they said, you know, basically, you know, uh, we. He basically he has himself to blame for this. Mm -hmm. Like it might not be the ideal turn of events, but but he's the one to blame. Um, and I, you know, we have to be clear: this was a right wing coup against an elected leader, and especially a, a leader who has, you know, advanced the the rights of Bolivia's indigenous majority um, in in very significant ways. Yes, and you know, uh, they formed a cabinet, Laura. Uh, in a country which is 60% indigenous, mm -hmm. that's all European, mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know? 
European descent, I should say. Right. No it was, women, yeah. you know, um, and, uh, you know, I mean, I don't know, what are they thinking? The social basis of that uh, thing is just so narrow. I, I doubt it's going to hold, hold uh, water. Well, they're probably afraid of the indigenous populations because in other countries, at least, the indigenous populations have been in the forefront of the environmental movements. Yeah. And, um, you know, like in Guatemala and other countries. And I, I think that obviously Morales' election was historic. And, um, you know, but this, uh, this idea, though, of the, um, the, the PWA, the PW article appeared about the lithium. I think that was on target because um, lithium is going to be is is probably why that coup happened. One of the many reasons, but it's such an incredibly valuable resource now. Didn't and, uh, didn't Tesla's stock uh, price jump significantly yes, in yeah. the wake of the coup? And Bolivia controls like forty three percent of the world's lithium. Wow! And what is lithium uh, used for? Um, car batteries. Cell phones. Electric car batteries, cell phone batteries. Yeah. yeah. And it's a, a very dirty process to mine it, and it should be controlled carefully. And uh, a lot of the workers mining it, they're exploited terribly in, in Africa. And I think they have it in Afghanistan, not sure, but they're these rare, mm. also rare earth minerals. Mm. So I think that's a big, a powerful motivator, especially since our technology needs it so much. So. That's something that we have to keep in mind that this is coups are not just about politics, they're about economics. Good point. And and the the ugliness of what has happened in Bolivia, like it's it's impossible to even apply a, a veneer of democracy to it. You know, when you see um, the elected mayor of uh, a city that you know where where Morales had really strong support dragged through the streets, uh, her hair cut off, doused in red paint, which is the color of the right wing uh, in Bolivia. Um, the, the city hall was burned. Um, this is an ugly, vengeful uh, act against the left wing uh, indigenous and indigenous led majority of, of, of the Bolivian population. Yes. Well, I doubt that it's going to last, but we'll see. Um, that uh, country has a huge uh, backing, the leadership of the country, the movement for socialism, socialism and the uh, Communist Party. And we'll be hearing from the Communist Party, by the way. We've been in touch with them, and we addressed some questions to them yesterday. And I understand uh, we'll be getting them back soon about what's taking place and what their uh, outlook uh, is. Uh, so for now, we send them our solidarity and, and support. And the most important contribution, because I think, uh, forget which one of you said it, uh, that we can make uh, is elections matter. And therefore getting Trump uh, out of office uh, will be extremely important. Uh, but it's also really important to keep the pressure on and raise the issue of the United States' intervention in other parts of the world, because even the Democrats on, on this issue, you know, uh, have to be uh, reckoned with. Um, and um, I think that that, that, that that U.S. military policy, that's something that so far has not come up in the campaign, mm -hmm. you know, in, an, in a meaningful way, cutting the military budget, you know, uh, withdrawing U.S. troops from around the world, um, even the uh, a notion that uh, we are the, uh, you know, best country in the world and we're the leaders of yeah, humanity. No, we have, and we all have some right to dictate uh, what other countries do in their defense policy and their economic policy. Uh, it's ridiculous. It's a, it's a, I don't know, part of being a communist. I think what leads people to the communist party is a, a hatred of double standards. And that's one of the most flagrant ones. Uh, well, why can't we just live side by side with other people, you know, in common cause, addressing the problems of the environment and, and uh, discrimination and, and uh, 
all of these kinds of things. I, I just think that we need a radical reorientation with respect to uh, the United States' place on the planet. Am I wrong? No, you're not wrong. <laughs> you know, I, I'll never, when I look at our armed forces and what they're doing and the potential they have for doing good, for example, why isn't, you know, I remember years ago when there was a terrible hurricane in Nicaragua, our army actually came in, helped them rebuild, or maybe it was else, you know what, I can't remember the country. But anyway, we, we, we helped build, you know, some of the housing. Rarely are our armed forces put in those kinds of positions for good. And, um, and we have this, instead, they're sent around the world to just protect U.S. corporate interests. And we had to make it really clear, it's not the interests of the American people at all. It's really just corporate interests. It's so mm -hmm. blatant. And um, unfortunately, our media doesn't do a good job reporting on it, unless you listen to things like Democracy Now! or other things, or read the PW. But uh, yeah, it's such a waste of a human resource, in my opinion, is what they're doing, what our, what our government does with our army. Yeah. And it's, I, I agree. I think it's, it's a waste as well of, you know, people are, are drawn to the armed services by a, a set of ideals like uh, of service, of um, comradeship, of, you know, working together to, to do something positive. And that gets that, that goodwill and that, that, that does, yeah, that sense of duty and service gets taken and twisted into something uh, violent and, and dangerous and, um, yeah, uh, by, by the ruling class. It's, well, we got a lot of work to do. We got a lot of work to do. And, uh, you, uh, Scott and you, Laura have been busy doing some of that work this week by getting content up on the cpusa.org website. There's a letter, a new letter to the editor, Scott. Um, there's, yeah, there's a, a new metal bag uh, touching on um, uh, someone, a, a young person, a high school freshman, in fact, asked if we were um, censoring uh, our uh, discussions by saying that anti-communist content was not welcome. Um, uh, and let's see, uh, we also reposted on Facebook uh, a mailbag from a little while back about what makes a party revolutionary? What's the difference between calling for a revolution and making a revolution? Uh, and we also have a uh, statement on Veterans Day uh, from a few days ago and a forthcoming one, I believe, on, um, on impeachment. And have you uh, anything to add with regard to, did, did, did that cover, Laura, the content that we got up this week? Yeah, yeah, I think it, I think it has. Uh, there's one more thing, like I'm. It just flew out of my head. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. No, <laughs> I think you covered it. I think you pretty much covered it. Yeah. Very good. Well, once again, folks, we're going to uh, invite you to come back tomorrow, uh, Saturday at 1:30 Eastern. That's 12:30 uh, uh, Central, and I think 11:30, uh, no, 10:30 uh, Pacific to uh, hear the opening report to the uh, Communist Party uh, National uh, Committee. And uh, meanwhile, keep the pressure on, you know, let find some way to express your point of view to the public, either a letter to the editor, circulate a meme, sign a petition, go to a demonstration, do something. You know, the people got to get organized. We got to get organized, organized, organized. I remember Stokely Carmichael, took the name Kwame Toure, used to start off every speech, you know, we got to get organized, 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 whatever you do, join an organization. You know, I don't care what organization you join, join some kind of organization, do something. And I think that that's an important uh, thing. Um, and, uh, and again, you know, we would like to invite you to join uh, the Communist Party. Um, well, I think that that's it. Does any, any other party shots? Going once, going twice. <laughs> Have a good one. Take care. Peace. See ya. Bye-bye.